Let's talk about kids first off, though, because we know a lot of parents are watching the vaccine news, especially closely these days, especially those who have children under five years old who can't get a shot just yet. Dr. Dominic Lucia, pediatric ER physician from Baylor Scott and White, joins us now to talk about this today. Uh, Dr. Lucia, thank you for being with us. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Jason. All right, so let's talk about children and COVID cases and hospitalizations. Uh, I, I think that, you know, early on, especially with Omicron, we were hearing that kids uh, might not be getting as sick, but what are you seeing there in the hospital? Yeah, so right now our numbers are fortunately coming down, but the idea that COVID doesn't affect kids negatively has really been dispelled over the last two years. I think the first year, Things were pretty good on the pediatric front, but really with Delta in late summer, we started seeing really significant severe disease in the teenage and pediatric population. That continued late summer, early fall. We got a little bit of a respite and then Omicron came and we actually saw our numbers go up again. And in the first two thirds of the Omicron surge, about 25% of our beds were filled with pediatric COVID positive patients. They may have been multiviral, they may have been COVID only, but we were dealing with that heavily. Fortunately, that's starting to come down now. See, that's so important to note that because we hear things anecdotally. You certainly see a lot of things on social media, uh, but when we talk about these kids ending up in the hospital, and especially in percentages like that, uh, we know that those are the serious, the most serious cases that are ending up there. So this definitely is having an impact on children, and hopefully uh, we will continue to see that downward trend there. I want to ask you a little bit about the symptoms because we know that children uh, are different than adults. They respond to things differently than adults. Uh, are, do you see different symptoms in children, COVID patients, than you do perhaps in adults? Well, that's a great question. I think part of the difficulty of teasing it out is that kids are used to getting respiratory viruses. They get a lot of them. And we talk about RSV, flu, metanumavirus, rhinovirus. They go through those in a typical year. Really with both of the waves, it was very difficult to distinguish what was COVID and what wasn't. So the testing was an important part of the diagnosis. One of the things though we did see is the kids that were unvaccinated, that got sicker, typically required oxygen, sometimes required antivirals. And then what we've seen with a small portion of the kids that had COVID that you don't see with these other viruses is some of the long-term effects. And our pediatric ID experts are still dealing with kids that months after having a seemingly innocent episode of COVID are still dealing with long-term fatigue, stuff that really interrupts their lives and their learning. Well, that's got to be uh, really frightening for a lot of parents to hear as well. Uh, do you know what the threshold is? When do I decide to take my kid to the ER? I see some of these symptoms that have been talked about. When, when is that threshold where I go, okay, this is serious enough to, to where we need to go into the hospital? Yeah, that's a great question. I think anything that involves your child having difficulty breathing, where they're breathing fast, they're breathing hard, they're taking more effort to breathe consistently, and certainly when they stop drinking, stop hydrating, those are the two biggest things that when we see in the pediatric emergency department, we need to address immediately. The rest of the symptoms, really when to get tested, when to come in, depends so much on the risk factors, depend on the ability to isolate. So there's a lot of variables there, and I know it's difficult for parents during these times. Uh, just to be clear here, uh, you know, you were talking about hopefully we're seeing this trend come down, these trend lines come down with overall infections and specifically with pediatric infections here. But are you still seeing them come in, though, uh, you know, yesterday, today? Or are we still seeing this phenomenon right now? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's not it's not gone away at all. We're just seeing them in lesser percentages and lesser kids needing to be hospitalized for COVID. And really, we've only seen that downtrend just in the last few days. That's sort of a new welcome downtrend. We've been riding a pretty significant wave of kids being hospitalized with Omicron for the last few weeks. Definitely wanted to underscore that though, because we, we know that uh, some folks have been starting to let their guard down. It is still happening. Uh, Dr. Dominic Lucia, pediatric ER physician from Baylor Scott and White. Thank you for uh, everything that you're doing there on the job and for being with us this afternoon. Thank All you right. for the opportunity.